Welp, fuck me in the butt. <laughs> Apple's getting rid of my favorite feature on the iPhone. <laughs> Want daily tech news in a way that doesn't suck? Of course you do. Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next episode. Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to Front Page Tech, of course show that gives you all the latest tech news from one geek that is me to another that is you. Happy Tuesday. Just a quick reminder for those of you that really love us, if you want extra episodes of this very show, we went ahead and posted two extra episodes of FPT Extra over on FPTExtra.com, but this is for the rest of you, our sweet, sweet FPT family, some of our favorite people in the world. We're spending most of this week with you. Let's do the news. All right, so first up, story numero uno for the day. Let's talk about Apple news. Now, when it comes to next year's iPhones, there's a couple things that we should expect. Number one, it seems like the iPhone SE2 is finally on the way coming next year. And number two, next year's iPhones could potentially have Touch ID returning with an in-display fingerprint reader under that display glass. But what about this year's? iPhones. It seems like one of the biggest changes to this year's iPhones actually isn't the addition of anything, rather the taking away of. Because the great Tim Cook giveth and then taketh away. We've been talking for like a year about Apple getting rid of 3D touch. And it seems like we're getting closer and closer to that exact thing happening. I mean, we already don't have 3D touch in the iPhone 10R. that already just it doesn't exist. And now it seems like this is going to stretch across all new iPhones this year, getting rid of 3D touch instead using haptic touch. Now, as much as I freaking hate this, it makes total sense to me. I want to remind you quickly of a quote from Phil Schiller. Now, this was actually back when 3D touch originally launched. He said, engineering wise, the hardware to build a display that does what 3D touch does is unbelievably hard. And we're going to waste a whole year of engineering really too, at a tremendous amount of cost and investment in manufacturing if it doesn't do something that people are going to use. If it's just a demo feature, and a month later no one is really using it, this is a huge waste of engineering talent. So basically what I've been saying for a while now, keep in mind, I love 3D Touch. It's one of my favorite features on an iPhone, but most of what it can do can just be replicated in a long press, and that's exactly what they're doing. Like, I said that before the iPhone XR came out, and that's exactly what they did with haptic touch. It just makes sense, and in the grand scheme of things, like, if you think about 3D touch, it's one of the most unintuitive features they've added. Like, it's not just something that consumers just stumble upon, like, oh, like, everything about iOS is easy to learn. It seems for 3D touch, for the most part, you have to be reminded that it's there or told that it's there for the first time in order to use it or start using it. So it makes sense. It's expensive for Apple to keep doing it. It's just sort of a waste of time, especially when they can just easily replicate that with a long press. So to me, it makes sense. What do you guys think? I'm really, really bummed about this because I love, love 3D touch. So, um, it makes sense. But also, Apple, thank you. Hey, speaking of things going away that you just love so, so, so much, YouTube gaming, everyone's favorite thing, is shutting down this week. I know. I can hear your cries already. Now, we here at Front Page Tech have been talking about YouTube gaming since 2015 sometime. That's when it launched. And now that standalone YouTube gaming app is going away on May 30th. Now, to be fair, we've sort of known about this. YouTube mentioned this sometime last year that it was gonna go away sometime because that like standalone YouTube gaming thing caused confusion among gaming fans. Aw, oh, sh**. <laughs> You don't say. So they slowly started to integrate YouTube gaming, like the service, into the main app. Where instead of being a completely standalone, by itself sort of service, and now it's a, it's a hub within YouTube. They've also merged YouTube and YouTube gaming subscriptions together. However, apparently users are gonna lose the list of games that they've saved. I don't know, I'm not, I don't, I'm, I didn't do this. I didn't, I wasn't part of this. So there you go. It's all going away this week. They're shutting it down. YouTube gaming, rip YouTube gaming. Rest in spaghetti, never forget. Uh, here's a list of all the reasons why I will miss it. Get it? The joke is that I will not miss it. 
All right, so last up, I know, I'm almost as sick of this as you are. We got an update to the whole Huawei situation. As you know, US banned them, blacklisted them, and now US companies have so stopped working with them. You you know the whole fucking thing. Uh, well, we've been hearing rumors, speculation, that possibly in order to retaliate, China would sort of do the same thing for Apple to make it harder on Apple to do business, make our lives here in the US harder as sort of like a eye for an eye sort of thing since we did that to Huawei and f***ed their life up. But apparently the founder of Huawei wouldn't be a huge fan of that. In fact, he went as far as to say as that will not happen, first of all. And second of all, if that happens, I'll be the first to protest. Apple is the world's leading company. If there was no Apple, there would be no mobile internet. If there was no Apple to help show us the world, we would not see the beauty of this world. Apple is my teacher. It's advancing in front of us. As a student, why should I oppose my teacher? I would never do that. All right, so first of all, uh, hell yes, if he means what he's- if he's being completely sincere here, not just covering his ass, let's give him the benefit of the doubt. And the benefit of the doubt. Let's just assume he means it. In that case, yes, dude, I am completely with you. I am all with you because when any company gets hindered the way Huawei is, it's bad for us. Like the real losers, when the competition is hindered in any way, the real losers is the market, the consumers, us. Competition. Call somebody. 911. I would suggest. Competition! Competition is best all around the board for us, the consumers, the market, period. Okay, I said what I need to say. I'm gonna try to stop talking now. No more talking, because I can't do it. These are not AirPods. These are the Air 2 from Nokis. They're a perfect one-to-one -one model of, uh, you know, the other things. They wirelessly charge, they pair super fast, they have touch controls, they have four hour playback time, 400 plus hours of standby time, and they sound way better than AirPods. Like, seriously, way better. And they cost less than half of the price. Nokia's has been shipping similar products with way better features for a while now. And we kind of love them, so if you're interested, you can get the Air 2 or the previous model for an even cheaper price with the links down in the description below. And of course, a huge thanks to Nokis for supporting this show. And that's the show. Hopefully you liked it, you learned something. If you did, hit that like button. If you hate my stupid face, hit the dislike button. If you're new here, subscribe, and I will see you guys tomorrow.